Hi, my name's Lee Pong and welcome to Trout Relief. We're back here again at Graff and Water and it's fishing really well. So Nick that right. tells me. Because Nick Dunn, one of my best buddies and my one of my reservoir dog team members. One of the dogs. One of the dogs. Nick's a guide on the water and uh, he's going to show us uh, how he approaches his day of Grafham. Um, what do you think is one of the most popular things people want to know? So the, the thing that people ask me the most when they come for a day out with me yeah. is what I want to know is where do you start on a yeah. big, big lake like this? Yeah. So you, you turn up and you, you've got all sorts of things to consider about where you're going to go. So where do you start? Well, I mean, there's, there's weather conditions to think about. There's wind, there's water clarity, there's the... Or is it going to be sunny? Is it and what they're cloudy? feeding on. What they're feeding on. Yeah. But you know, the, the, the thing that I would do oh. first, even as somebody who fishes every day of the week almost, go into the lodge. Yeah. <clears throat> ask the guys at the lodge. Yeah. Because they're the guys that know. So I may have been here a week ago, but in a week, things have changed. Yeah. The, the, all the fish that used to be over in Sanctuary and yeah. Savages might have moved somewhere else. But that's graphing for you, isn't yeah. it? Well, it changes any, from day to anyway, day. These fish yeah. have got tails and fins and they, they, can they, swim. they can swim quick. Yeah. So they end up at a different part of the lake and, you know, a, week's, a week later, they're in a totally different spot, feeding on shrimps over there. They'll be feeding on snails over there. They'll be feeding on fry over there. Mm. How do you know and what do you do yeah. and where do you go? The first thing, ask the guys on the fishery. Good idea. Ask the wardens, yeah. ask the lodge, yeah. ask the people in the shop. Local knowledge. That's the thing, can't isn't it? it? No. Can't beat it. Don't Absolutely. be embarrassed to ask. Yeah. yeah. Looking at the conditions today, what we've got here today, Nick, what do you reckon? How would you approach it yourself? Go on. So even though it's bright, yeah. the, uh, and this is again like local knowledge, uh, because I've been fishing here all, all week, or for the past six weeks, really, uh, even though it's bright, these fish have not been deep. <clears throat> so typically, fish don't like the bright because yeah. they haven't got eyelids. They can't. They can't shade their eyes. Mm. They can't do this like we can. No. And so typically, in a lot of lakes, when it's like this, they'll go deep. But at Grafham, because the place is so full of food, yeah, they're still on they're the feed. Up. They're still feeding. The water is actually a good temperature. Mm. You know, it's not cold yet. It's only just come down. Yeah. from the summer temperatures. Yeah, yeah. So these fish are hard on the feed, and um, I, mean, I spooned a fish the other day. You saw I the saw birds. that, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can, we can show that. Absolutely yeah. rammed with shrimp. Yeah. Uh, four, four and a half pound fish, absolutely fit as a fiddle, rammed with shrimp. So you so, think shrimps would so be the I way to go? Fishing, yeah. There'd be two methods I would deploy. Cool. I'd either fish uh, a fab on the point and two hairs ear type shrimp patterns whatever yep. your favorite is mine is a mohican yep. size 10s and 12s i never don't have one on yeah in the winter i know that. Them. i catch loads of fish on them it's a great fly and the pulls are phenomenal yeah you know they take your arm off fantastic <laughs> um and the other method is i hate to say it but the snakes are working yeah well, it's not everyone's cup of tea but if you want to get your string pulled, one of them, one of those boys, <laughs> or a black one, or a yeah. perch one, yeah. the perch ones are working well. They're going well. There's loads of perch fry in. Right. Um, so that's another food source for the fish. So we could use two methods today, really. I think we should split the difference. And yeah. You, you go snaking. All right. And I'll go shrimping, and we'll see the difference. You do the clever stuff. I'll do the, <laughs> it's not clever. I'll do the noddy stuff. It's, I'm going to use three flies. I don't really like using four flies from the bank. No. You get it all sort of whirlwind turbulence. Not too bad with this wind though. It's going sort of from left to right. So we yeah. should get, you should get a turnover with your cast, yeah. I guess. Yeah. But even that, so. To that point, Lee, that's why we picked this bank. Right. Right. So, we, we're, so we're on the south shore of, of Grafham Water. Yeah. We know the north shore is lifting with fish. We know there's loads over there. But, and it looks quite calm here where yeah. we are. But yeah. actually when you get over to the north shore, it's going to be pretty bumpy. Yeah. Even though there's fish there, they're going to be hard to fish for. Yeah. So we're going to start here. Yep. And we'll work our way along these banks. This uh, July bank over here has got loads of fish. We could end up around there. Yeah. Uh, there's fish at uh, Perry Point. There's fish at Gaines. Well, I so mean, we've got the we've got the, the harbour just here, and obviously, yeah. 
historically all the, the, the fry feeders are going to be in the harbour because anywhere where there's an obstacle or an obstruction, the fry are going to congregate around that yeah. and then the trout are going to zoom in on that. So that makes it, that's an obvious sort of spot. We could, we could have a bash in there. So yeah. I could give that a go there. Yeah. And you could go and, what, you looking for sort of rocks in that, in the water where the shrimps are going to be or? Yeah, the, the shrimps prefer. Because the weed's the, sort of dying away a bit now. The weeds, the, 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 the shrimps love the weed. Yeah. But also they love the rocky outcrops yeah. and, the, and, the, and the, the structure. Yeah. So anywhere the structure. The, yes. You kick a few yeah. stones up on the bottom. Yeah. You'll, you'll find shrimp. Was, what was the other thing they used to do? The, the Grafham Shuffle? The Grafham Shuffle, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the Grafham Shuffle is, uh, you couldn't make it up really. And uh, how are these trout? They're clever fish. Yeah. I mean, people say fish are stupid, right? But these trout have learned that when you wade out and kick mm. up a few stones and kick up a yeah. bit of a cloud, that means food. Mm. It means there's going to be shrimps being kicked up. And when you come out of the water, you wade into your... To your chest, yep. kick up a few stones, wade back out, wade back to the shore, and there's fish feeding on the shrimps that you just kicked up. Wow, we, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so you go snaking. All right. Snake off. Good. And I'll go shrimping. Um, it's a bit almost. bright, but. It is bright, but Lee, these fish are so hard on the feed, it's not bothering them. Yep. They just don't seem to be bothered. But they seem to have come in from the main water now as well, the, don't they? they? All, no, not all the fish, but a lot of the fish mm. in this lake are now around the edges, yeah. feeding on the shrimps. Yeah. And in literally a foot to three foot of water is yeah. where you'll find them. Yeah. Sounds good, mate. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. But this is not a competition. I know how competitive you are. Mm. Maybe we'll have dinner on it tonight. Okay. Yeah. It's not a competition. It's not a competition, though. Okay, but the loser buys dinner. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> go on, then. Let's go and get them. Right. Let's go for it. Right, just come back down. I've left Nick up there to do his shrimp feeders. I've come back down to the uh, to the to the boat dock. And I'm going to fish for fry feeders. So what I've got on is a smallish sort of snake, which is going to represent a, a perch fry. Nick's uh, done quite well on this during the week when he's been out guiding. So now the setup I've got on is is around about. 18 foot to be quite honest so I've got that on the point and then I've got two shrimps so I've got a shrimp on my first dropper and a shrimp on my second dropper but as I say about 18 foot in total well I've just cast out and uh, I'm on a floating line as I say I've got a feeling I might want some sort of a tip line on really I feel as though I should be getting down a little bit deeper today for some reason, I don't know why. So I'm just going to let this sink, this, um, this snake I've got on. It's just coming round in the wind nicely really, it's just arcing round there. It actually looks alright, but... Uh... So being as there's nobody down to my right, I have the luxury of being able to move along this bank without encroaching on any other anglers. So I'm gonna just keep on working my way down here, cast and pace, cast and pace, until we come across some fish. We did come across some fish very early on, but um, they appear to have uh, not reappeared. <laughs> okay. Nicholas. What do you reckon, mate? What do I reckon? <laughs> I've not had a pull. Are you not marmalising them? No, I've had ten so far. You fibber. <laughs> it's all on film. I know. No, I haven't had a pull. What about you? No, no more fish. So no. apart from that one early on, I've tried down here, along this bank here, uh, towards Perry Point. Yep. From that corner there, there's usually fish there. Nothing. 
I've Look, been watching you catch nothing. I've been I've been getting a really good line out there and I've just changed tactics. Yeah. I just put a small blob on rather than the, the snake just yeah. to see if there's any stockies swimming around. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing at all. It's weird, isn't it? So the only thing you can conclude is they're either not here or they're just not feeding. So both. I reckon. <laughs> it could be both. Yeah. Could be both. So I think we should go and have a go on the spring bank along there. Because when I was there right, Monday, yeah. it was there was a load of fish real close in, and the wind's coming off that bank. Yeah. So that's easy casting. We know yeah. there's fish there, and we know we can cast to them. So might I, be a good idea to give it a go. Are you there. up for the walk, you old? I uh, reckon, yeah. You old geezer. Yeah, I reckon. If you, you are, manage it. If you are, soldier. What about Trevor though? <laughs> we'll we'll have to carry him. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get him there uh, one way or the other. Yeah. That was a bit of a trek, wasn't it? Just a bit. Just, <laughs> you just 15, about made it. 15, 20 minutes of yomping. Well, I was going to have to give you a bit of cardio there for well, a minute. <laughs> so, yeah, so, what do we call this bank? This is Spring Bank. Spring Bank. So it's just round from the lodge. Yeah. It, but it's a good 15 minutes walk through sort yeah, of muddy good. terrain. So, But it, it, who knows? We haven't cast in yet. It might be. It's worth it. So, in some guiding days here yeah. over the past week, we've been fit catching fish in this really shallow water, um, like literally starting the boat here yeah. and drifting out 50, 100 yards and then coming back in because the fish are close in. Yeah. So all being well, they'll still be here Good. and we'll get a few. Let's hope so. And it'll be worth a yomp. All right. Let's but to, to your point, you know, we've moved because there's nothing happening where we were. Absolutely. There's no point in just no. grinding it out where the way, when you've come to the conclusion that there's no fish and, and even if there are fish, they're not having it, so you may as well move. I just like the look of this, this, this though, but you've got these rocks here which are obviously yeah. going to hold the shrimps and then you've got a structure just behind us there which you can't yeah. see, but there's a couple of fences that go in, there's yeah. one up a bit further where the, the other lad's fishing. I mean all of those places are sort of fish holding places. They are, and this is the exact spot yeah. where I had that four and a half pounder that was coughing up shrimps. Yeah. So, so gonna we know they're, they're going to be on the shrimps Well here. I've changed my tactics a little, I've gone to a floating lime. Right. I've put a small blob on the, uh, fab on the top and, and two shrimps. So, hopefully. You'll have them on that. Come on let's Come go on. and get them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm just casting down the wind at the minute into shallow water where I know the fish have been feeding. So I've got two shrimp patterns on, hare's ear, Mohican hare's ears. I've got a fab on the point, as before. I haven't changed my tactics because I know it's a tactic that works and if there's fish here, we'll get them. It's just clouding over a bit now, but uh, we should actually make the fishing conditions a bit better, but um, probably have a, a pull straight away here to be honest but uh, nothing so far I just hope this rain stays off looking a bit grim behind us a little bit grey so that's very interesting we just had an absolute torrential downpour and as soon as the downpour cleared, I cast in, first cast, I've got a nice silver rainbow. Only small, but it's beautiful. So what's, what's amazing is we came here and it was low pressure, it was moody low pressure. A massive storm just came through that we sheltered from. And I've literally got back in the water came back out and the the storm went away you can probably see the storm in the in the background still and I've literally cast had two casts and hooked two fish so it just showed that the fish were here all the time but the low pressure was putting them off from feeding they hate low pressure another nice fish not huge but extremely fit and a lot of fun. Back he goes. Up there. Oh, 
There's one. Oh, blimey. <laughs> wow. These fish don't half pull. When they hit you, they hit you hard. Hey! Oh, he's going well. That took closer in. Huh? That took closer in. That was close, yeah. Yeah. It's on your snake. It's on the snake. It's on your snake. Is he? Yeah. What cracking fish, aren't they? Absolutely, yeah. Look at that. Yeah, belters, aren't they? Well, it's worth the walk, wouldn't it? Yeah. Another cracker. Go on. There you go. Right, well, we've come back to the lodge area. And uh, I think we've achieved what we really set out to do today, really, Nick. Yeah. Um, which was to hopefully show you guys what you do when you get there. Now, with Nick's local knowledge, it's really helped today. Thanks a lot, Nick, for that. Yeah, it's a pleasure. It's been great. Sprinkled a bit of your magic over the top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And, uh, and it was really interesting when that storm coming through. Yeah. And the difference in the pressure and the, and, and the fish just came on. Yeah, it was they, superb. I think they were there the whole time. Yeah, I think they just so. weren't. Yeah. We weren't catching yeah. them because they weren't having it. Yeah, because of that pressure. Yeah, and then as soon as the pressure went, two fish in two casts, no, just crazy. Made all the difference. Just shows you, doesn't it? It did. It made all the difference. Yeah, and I noticed today that you were actually casted more than one rod length out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why was that? Well, obviously, the better, the more distance you can get, the better because yeah. you're covering more fish and more water. We were fortunate because we had the wind slightly behind us too. But uh, I'm glad you asked me about, about casting because I was using uh, a prototype rod which is called a D-Flex Hyperlite. And the reason why, well it's, it's a prototype, so there's like three of these in existence in the world. Uh, and it's been invented by a doctor of physics who's also an angler who wanted to get more distance more easily and so he invented this new shape of rod and it's a triangular shape of rod. So where most rods are circular in profile, this is triangular. And it's a certain type of triangle, it's not just, it's a scientific triangle called a rouleau triangle. And what it means is it's, it's actually a, it's a, a dual action rod, so it's stiffer in one direction and softer in the other. Mm. So you can make the rod stiff in the forward casting yeah. plane so you can punch a big line out. But then when you're playing a fish, it goes easy on the fish. Right. So it's softer in the, in the fish playing direction. Sounds like a really interesting concept, mate. It, does. it, it is. You're getting a great line out there. You were superb. Yeah. It was really punching it out. Yeah, yeah. So and is it quite light as well? It's, it, well, yeah, that's why, that's why it's called a hyperlight. Right. So, I mean, well, the reason it's light is because, because triangles are structurally stronger than circles, you can make a triangular rod with less material than a yeah. circular rod so you can make it much lighter. Thanks for joining us again today. Please don't forget to leave any messages for us. We really enjoy reading them. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Push that button down there for us, it is free. And Nick, don't forget, I still owe you dinner. You do, <laughs> yeah. for the competition that wasn't a competition. Exactly, Yeah. exactly. Yeah. The only good thing about it is, there's nothing open. Yeah. <laughs> All right.